Stop polluting. Hey, welcome to The Whole Truth, where I am taking you through the entire Bible from Genesis all the way to Revelation, and we are not skipping anything. So if that sounds good to you, make sure that you reach down and hit the little subscribe button below, and don't forget to go over to thewholetruthbiblestudy.com, and there you will find all the videos in one convenient location, free Bible study resources, and ways to support the channel. So I hope that you'll go over there and uh, visit that website as well. But today, right now, Grab your Bible and turn it open to Numbers chapter 35. We're ending Numbers chapter 35, and tomorrow will be Numbers chapter 36. And that's it. All of Numbers will be completed. And if you've stuck with me through all of it, now you've gone through the book of Genesis, the book of Exodus, the book of Leviticus, the book of Numbers, four whole books of the Bible have you studied through. And then next week, we will get into Deuteronomy. I am so excited to get into Deuteronomy. New studio coming, new intro coming, new uh, equipment coming. So just really excited to be a part of what God is doing. And I hope that you're coming on this journey with me. And by the way, I am not in this for equipment or studios or, or whatever. Like I'm, I, I have a whole goal here. There is a mission here. And I think my first videos prove this, whether it's a cell phone camera sitting on a tripod if that's what it is, or, you know, all the way to whatever God's going to grow this into, the goal here, the mission here is to get as many people as I can into God's word where there really are answers for our lives. That's what I want to do. I want to get us into God's word. I truly believe that God's word has the answers for our lives, but we got to read it. We've got to be in it. That's where we're, we're going to learn. And so today we're in this last part of numbers and it kind of seems choppy. It kind of seems all over the place. And you're like, wait, wait, wait a second. What is all that? Oh, oh, but I think that if we'll just let it sink in, it's convicting. It's a convicting passage today. I hope you read it with me. Numbers 35 and pick up with me in verse 29. Numbers chapter 5, verse 29. And these things shall be a statute of judgment for you throughout your generations and all your dwellings. Whoever kills a person, the murderer shall be put to death on the testimony of witnesses. But one witness is not sufficient testimony against a person for the death penalty. Moreover, you shall take no ransom for the life of a murderer who is guilty of death, but he shall surely be put to death. And you shall take no ransom for him who has fled to his city of refuge, that he may return to dwell in the land before the death, the death of the priest. So you shall not pollute the land where you are. For blood defiles the land, and no atonement can be made for the land, for the blood that is shed on it, except by the blood of him who shed it. Therefore do not defile the land which you inhabit in the midst of which you dwell, for I the Lord dwell among the children of Israel. Okay, so here's where we start. It's this, that all, this is the statute for all the generations to come. This is the statute that is for all the generations who are, are those who are going to dwell in the promised land. So context, let's set the historical context. Israel has come out of slavery. They wandered in the wilderness for 40 years and they're on the edge of the promised land waiting to go into the promised land. They're going to go conquer the land and this will be Israel in the promised land. And we're going to see that. We'll have a little bit more of this time in the book of Deuteronomy. It's right here at the edge. They're, they're not into the promised land yet. Deuteronomy is a second giving of the law. And I'll explain all of that as we get into Deuteronomy. But after De Deuteronomy, we'll get Joshua and Judges and that's where we're really seeing the establishment of Israel as a nation in their land, in the promised land. And so these are the rules and statutes of how they will live there. And most specifically right now, God's honing in on the death penalty. And here's where we start with the death penalty. The death penalty cannot be executed on one witness. You cannot have just one witness. There, it must be out of the mouths of more witnesses to say that this person murdered this other person. If you don't have witnesses, eyewitnesses that can say, or proof that can say that this person murdered this other person, then they, they cannot have the, the death penalty exacted upon them because then that would be wrongful death on them. So they're facing a trial and God is saying when somebody is facing a trial and they're claiming that the death was accidental, then somebody else is saying that the death was murder, then that needs to have a fair trial 
and you have to have more than one witness. Only one witness is not going to be enough. I think there's a practical lesson for us right there. Before we get into the real meat of this, I think there's a practical lesson for us in who we listen to. You know, you really ought to consider the source. And there's one thing that I would warn you about listening to, to sources, especially when it comes to testimony, bad testimony about somebody else. And this is what I would warn you. Be, care, be cautious that there's not multiple testimonies all stemming from just one. Something I've experienced personally is when one source is making accusations, but what then other people latch on to that source and they say, well, I've heard people say, well, I've heard people say, well, I've seen, but really they haven't seen and they haven't heard. They've just had this one source that's been kind of the spur of all of that. And so that's, that's not good. It's, you can't just take the testimony of one person, especially when we were talking about something like the death penalty, as big as that is. Now I've already talked about the death penalty in another video, so I'm not trying to tee off on the death penalty as much as I want to get to the end of this. So God says this, he says, you can't take money for the murderer. You can't, he can't pay a ransom and then, and then get out of it. No, the, the penalty for murder is the death penalty. And so you can't take money for it. And what we really mean there is like, there can't be an atonement made. There can't be a forgiveness made for the murderer outside of he has to die in the death penalty. He, he has to, he has to die. They can't, keep him around because he paid some amount of money. Now there's a second lesson again, before we get into the real meat of everything, there's a second lesson there, which is money's not going to buy that forgiveness. The only way that forgiveness can be found, the only way that justice can be served is by the person who had done the deed, they had to die by the death penalty. Well, that's exactly why Christ had to die for us. Christ took our place in death where we deserve death. He took that upon himself. So it's not like God was saying one thing and then doing another. No, God said that that blood was going to be required. Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission for sins. But Christ shed his own blood in our place. He didn't take another way. It's not like he said, well, I own the cattle on a thousand hills. I have enough money here. I'll pay it off. Nope. Blood had to be shed. But then there's this really crazy thing. This is the, this is the heart of what I want to get to today, which is as I get to the end of the passage, what we read is, so we started out with, it's got to be more than one witness. You can't let the murderer pay his way out and, and pay a ransom to get out of it. Nope. Death penalty has, has to be exacted. And here's why God says, so that you don't pollute the land. Don't pollute the land. This is what God said. I'm going to read it again, starting in verse 33. So you shall not pollute the land where you are for blood defiles the land and no atonement can be made for the land for the blood that has been shed on it, except by the blood of him who shed it. Therefore, do not defile the land which you inhabit in the midst of which I dwell. For I, the Lord, dwell among the children of Israel. Oh, friends, I want to get real practical. Innocent blood that is shed and no penalty that is made for that pollutes the land. Oh, how dangerous of a thing it is that we live in a country that still allows for abortions. I know that we've overturned Roe v. Wade. I, I get that. But all we've done is put it in the hands of the states. It's not like abortions themselves are outlawed. And it's not as if we've we've completely gotten rid of abortions altogether. We've just we've just done them in a different way. Like I live in a state where they're they're not allowed to go to a clinic to go get an abortion, but there are websites, and I'm not going to say them here, I'm not going to promote them, but there are websites that young women go to that walk them through if you live in a state where you can't get an abortion, but you need an abortion, and they walk you through the process of how to do that, of how to have an abortion, how to get abortion pills, or how to get to another state, a state that you could go, that you could have an abortion, not to mention the fact that leaving it up to the states is leave, leaving up to some states that even go as far as partial birth abortion. Do you not know that innocent blood that is shed pollutes the land? You know, we see God in the Bible is going to exact justice on those who do evil. You know, we, we talk often about the love of God and the mercy of God, and those things are true, but it is also true that God is just. And God, one day, re remember in the book of the Revelation, I like cut myself off there, but it just came to me. Do you remember like in the book of the Revelation, there's the scene of this table and there's all these people under the table and the angel looks at John the Revelator and he says, he says to John, who are those people? And John's like, I, I don't know. You, you tell me, you know. And what does the angel say to John? He says, these are those people who were saved out of great tribulation. They're, they're under the table and they're crying out. These people that are under the table are crying out. Now, obviously this is prophetic scene 
right? But these people are under the table and they're crying out and they're saying, Lord, how long, how long, how long before you avenge us? How long before you get justice for us? And the Lord gives them all white robes, gives them all new robes. And he says a little bit longer. The truth is when Jesus returns one day in his victory, now I'm talking about all the way at the very end of Revelation, when Jesus returns in victory, a sharp two-edged sword is going to come out of his mouth. And you know what the Bible says? The Bible says that the whole earth is going to burn up with a fervent heat. Guys, the justice of God is serious. And he warned and said that innocent blood pollutes the land. You know, we want to talk about pollution like straws or you know, paper consumption or all the garbage that we use or carbon or emissions or goodness, cow gas or whatever. Like we have all of these things that we try to, to fight pollution. But if you really want to fight pollution, you ought to consider the innocent blood that is being shed. That God said that blood pollutes the land. All right. I know that was heavy to end out the video. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you found some challenging thoughts there. And I hope you'll come back tomorrow. We're going to finish the book of Numbers and then get into the book of Deuteronomy. I'll see you then.